2021 has been the year of the 21 point game. Just four months before its Olympic debut, 3X3 is back for its 10th edition, starting in one of the meccas of the game, y'all, Doha, Qatar. We sit down with world number one Lehman, who are out for revenge this season after two devastating losses against arch rival Riga to end the 2020 season. Dunk champ Chris Staples opens up about how he's become a social media sensation with nearly half a million TikTok followers. And Amsterdam Talent Pro talk about how they're no longer a team of just Dutch masters after adding former Lehman star Maxim Kovacevic. Plus, stay tuned to the end of the magazine. We got a loaded top five plays of the tournament. It's quick, it's epic, and it's Olympic. Welcome to the world of FIBA 3x3 basketball, a game played with non-stop music on a half court between two teams of three players aiming to hit 21 points before 10 minutes of game time is up. Previously at the FIBA 3x3 World Tour, last season's ending was crazier than Britney Spears' documentary. Riga won their first world tour after an insane Tiso buzzer beater from Norris Miezes down in Lehman in one of the greatest shots of all time. After being more clutched than Tom Brady at the Super Bowl, Miezes, aka Robin, proved he's no sidekick after winning the world tour MVP and being crowned the new king of 3x3. But nothing's guaranteed in 2021, especially on the unpredictable world tour. Are Riga now the undisputed powerhouse of 3x3? Can Lehman recover from the worst cooler in 3x3 history? Will new look Novi side carry on the team's proud history? Or will a new team emerge and take the crown? Let's find out. I'm still catching my breath after an incredible day one to start the season. Let me tell you, there were more thrillers than Christopher Nolan's IMDB. It started with two-time Doha Masters champs Regal being pushed to the brink by Edmonton, who returned to the world tour. It might be a new year, but some things stay the same. Carlos Lasmanas rediscovered his favorite spot in Doha, and the Latvians took control at 20-14. But record shootout winner Steve Sir had the answer like the head of class in Edmonton. Level things up at 20 apiece. But who do you call in a crisis in Doha? Batman, of course. So Riga survived that first challenge, but not against Amsterdam, who were strengthened by the addition of former Lehman star Maxim Kovacevic. And the prize recruit nailed his first shot in new colors. Lasmanis and Miezes surprisingly lost their superpowers as Arvin Slachter slaughtered the champs. You guessed it, Riga hit back, but Aaron Royer broke the late deadlock, which proved enough as Lasmanis couldn't call game this time. The Pool C blockbuster between Oob and Novisad had more hype than coming to America too, after Novisad greats Marco Savage and Dejan Majstorovic switched to their Serbian rivals. The maestro got on board first before Dushan Bullet, aka Mr. Bulletproof, responded. This was tenser than Oprah interviewing Meghan and Harry, but Strahinja Stojicic made it look easy as Oob pulled away. Bullet didn't give up though, but Savage had the last laugh as he and the maestro won the bragging rights. The game between New York Harlem and rising power Graz was more unpredictable than an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. The New Yorkers dug out of an early hole with Disco Damo finding his groove to give them a 20 to 17 lead. But Moritz Lenegger went all Schwarzenegger on him and pulled the trigger for the Tiso buzzer beater. New York Harlem and Princeton both needed W's in the Battle of America, but it was the New Yorkers who came out on top. They typically went viral with Marcel Wune sending Kareem Maddox back to USA, and Disco Damo made the court his personal dance floor on the way to the win. World number one Lehman advanced despite losing to Piran, while unbeaten number 12 seed Graz were the surprise story. Number five seed Princeton were the highest seed to go fishing, while Shaque Gubale, Edmonton, and locals Losel also got eliminated.
No 3x3 team ever has had such brutal back-to-back -back defeats on the big stage than world number one Lehman, who lost last year's World Tour final and Doha Masters decider against Riga through all-time great TSO buzzer beaters. They returned to painful memories in Doha, where Carlos Lasmanis hit an epic winner just last November. Uh, we had, I think, three or four shots. And those were good shots, but the ball didn't want to get in. And uh, on the last play, uh, we didn't communicate. They got a crazy shot, and they made it, of course. Me is coming to screen. Lasmanis, and we're trying to switch a little bit late. He jump, shoot, and score. <laughs> but yeah, it's a game. Reliving the same bad dream just one month later, Lehman were denied their first World Tour final victory when Norris Miezes hit a shot for the ages in the decider. Yeah, when we see that we we're gonna play with Riga in finals, we were happy because we wanted, like, let's say, revenge from Doha Masters. And I think that it was the real final two best teams at the moment were in the World Tour final and we were thinking that we will win. In Doha we play, I can say, a perfect game for eight, nine minutes and then we stop. And the game in Jeddah was completely different. They started good, they were better, but we didn't give up and we came back 19 to 18. We didn't communicate again. And again less possession. <laughs> Same. You know the end of the story. I have on the bench and uh, me the score and in the camera it's see uh, me drink water. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't talk like for two or three hours with anyone. When you lose the game and you have uh, the night in front of you, you just cannot sleep. You, you're constantly thinking about the game, thinking about uh, turning the moment back. But Lehman ain't sulking over the heartbreak. Instead, they believe those painful defeats can make them even stronger this season. We can look back. If we look back, we're just thinking all the time about that and it could happen again. I don't, I don't want to think about that. I hope that we learn a lesson. My personal opinion, I think that we are the best team at the moment, so I think and I just hope that we will show that on the court also. All right, here's a look at the quarterfinal bracket, which features seven of the top eight seeds and 12 seed surprise Gras. First up, Old Foles, Novi Sad, and Peter An renewed their rivalry, with the Slovenians confident after beating Lehman on day one. New look Novi Sad might be different, but they still shared like they care. The Sphinx Simon Finsgaard threw dimes dimes, called him Cairo Irvin, and he got Peter An back in the game. Drahinja Milosevic with a game high nine points might be Novi Sad's new maestro as the Serbs edged clear. But Gaspar Ovnik, AKA the teacher, went to school and we had another thrilling finish. Dushan Bullet finally unloaded as Novi Sad made the final four while Piran again crashed at the quarterfinals. Two-time Doha Masters defending champs Riga had a tough task against dangerous Graz. Carlos Lasmanis drove his Batmobile right down the lane in a quick start. Mortz Lenegger shouted, I'll be back, and the Austrians were not going away. Norris Miezes broke the deadlock, and then Lasmanis doubled the lead. But Fabricio Vai's late burst forced OT. Riga turned the bat signal on, and Lasmanis answered the call to get the champs over the line. X Factor teams Amsterdam Talent and Pro at New York Harlem clashed in a mouth-watering contest. Disco Damo had the defense in a spin cycle, and Joey King proved he was still royal by hitting from Times Square. But Amsterdam's boom recruit, Maxim Kovacevic, went bang, bang, as the shootout contest started a little bit early in Doha. New York Harlem again edged ahead through the hustle of Marcel Essenwune, but the Dutchman forced OT when Julian Jarring somehow escaped Essenwune's D. In extra time, Kovacevic broke New York Harlem's heart and proved he's the hottest addition since John Cena got cast in Fast and Furious 9. 
Last but not least, it was a Serbian showdown with Oob against Lehman. Things didn't look good for the world number one since their star player Stefan Koy had sprained his ankle badly on day one. But y'all remember, we're talking about the team who won the 2019 Deverson Masters final without a sub. Mihailo Vasque took control of the paint like Picasso. Dejan Majstorovic had the answers like Jeopardy, and Oob responded. They overran a tiring Lehman with six quick points from Strahinja Stojicic, who was creating a heat wave in Doha. But never write off Lehman, who had the mental toughness of Djokovic at center court. They finished on a crazy 8-2 run, with Alexander Ratko finishing it off as a three-man Lehman team. Did the impossible again. The shootout contest. This is the moment we crown the best sniper in the whole tournament. In Doha, even the McDonald's shootout contest was a thriller. Dejan Majstorovic started off hot with 11 points. Then the record holder, Steve Sir, went plus one like a wedding date with 12. What do you think Darius Tarvidis did? The new Shake Gubale star had 13 like a Friday after knocking down his final money ball right before the buzzer. Darius Tarvidis is your McDonald's shootout contest winner of the Doha Masters. Now you already know Chris Staples from his artistic dunks, but the American has also taken his creative talents to TikTok, where he's become a worldwide sensation with almost a half million followers in the past year. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit a year ago, Staples decided it was time to brighten the mood on social media. I already had a community behind me of slam dunkers and you know kids that follow me. And you know, when the pandemic started, I'm like, well, if I'm gonna be at home, I'm gonna make sure that I'm taking advantage of being at home. So I'm gonna post a lot more content, people are on their phones a lot more, and I'm gonna get bigger, faster, stronger throughout this time. So when this pandemic is over, I'm the best Chris that I can be. I wanna be able to go to a basketball court and people say, oh, I follow you, I, I watch your stuff all the time. I got $500 right here that says you can't dunk the ball from there without the ball touching the ground and no traveling. Half work. From right there. Give me my what? I'm trying to make basketball as fun as it can be, you know, and I put the two together, you know, so when I do TikTok, you know, I try to make funny basketball videos, still doing my talent, but you know, put in, in another way where people can enjoy watching it. And it just grew from that point and I just start to run away with it. Teaming up with other major creators on TikTok, the dunk champ has become something of an influencer on the platform. And then you start throwing him off the backboard to your world famous dunker friend. And he'll go back and get ready to do it again. Oh my bad, okay, ready to do it again. Juggling Josh, Josh Horton one of the best in the world, 20 Guinness World Records. We actually did a video together where he was juggling, I was doing alley-oops. We were like, man, this is kind of fun, you know? Like, you know, for him, it's like, this is cool for him because he gets to throw an alley-oop. For me, I'm like, I've never seen someone juggle like this. So we both were enjoying that time, and we just started to collaborate from there all the time. Then I run into Jenna Bandy. She's a female basketball player who has a crazy jump shot, very skilled, can do trick shots as well. It's like, all right, we have a girl, we have a guy who can juggle, a slam dunker. We all went out and set Guinness World Records. You know, we put our talents together and let's just see where we can go by becoming a group. With Staples creating a brand more rounded than just dunking, he hopes to inspire the next generation of dunkers to do more than just bend rims. Jordan Kilgannon, he's changed the game as far as how he created different dunks and it's become a trend and inspired people to create new dunks. For me, I want to create it to where it's like, you know what, we can expand it even more than that. We can be in a movie as a slam dunker, you can set a world record, you can have your own show, you can be on TV while still doing your talent. I want people to think that and the next group of guys coming in, like under me, like, all right, you know, we watch you, now we're going to continue to grow it.
Oh, so now you want to see if Staples is more than just a TikTok meme. I get it. The American was up against some of the best in the industry at the Elite Air Dunk Contest with the reigning World Tour Dunk champ Peter Grabo Grabowski from Poland and Joel Henry, a.k.a. the Royal Guard representing the UK. Henry laid a goose egg first up, which proved to be fatal, but he at least left Doha with an awesome memory of filthy reverse over two volunteers in the best dunk of the semifinals. It was a battle royale in the final, with the pole setting the pace with a dunk off the bounce after tucking it under his legs to earn an almost perfect score. Staples needed to respond, and he got so high he needed a flight attendant before finishing with a powerful one-handed yam, but it fell well short of Grabo's tally. Grabo tried the elbow dunk after clearing Joel Henry, but got punished by the judges for using his offhand for help. Smartly, Staples showed the judges how it's done. A clean honey dip that would make Vince Carter proud. It was crunch time, and Grabo's final dunk was picture perfect as he cleared two dudes with a ninja kick and went between the legs. He earned straight tens to call game on a whole contest. A fast finishing Staples had a flawless final dunk, but it wasn't enough. So Peter Grabowski wins the title and takes home the $3,000 check at the Elite Air Dunk Contest. Defending champs Riga played old foe number six, Novi Side, while number one seed Lehman faced number seven seed Amsterdam Talent Pro. First up, Riga renewed their rivalry with Novi Side, and it was Dushan Bullet, aka Mr. Bulletproof, who unleashed early for the new look Serbs. But Agnes Chavars made his own statement before Tomas Ivosev showed he's the master of bully ball. Carlos Lasmanis might be wanted for arson in Doha as the blazing start continued. Not to be outdone, Norris Miezis went bang bang as the heavyweights went punch for punch. With the game hanging in the balance, it was time for Dushan Bullet to show he's still the brightest star of them all. 3x3's GOAT FaceTime Lasmanis in an incredible four point play, sealing Novi Saab's 21-16 victory well before the time limit. Riga's dream of a three-peat in Doha over with. The most important thing is they're enjoying the, the game and, and playing better and better. Next up, Maxim Kovacevic was reunited with his old teammates as Amsterdam met shorthanded world number one Lehman, who continued to play without star Stefan Kovacevic. Kovacevic was pumped up after the and one, and Arvin Slachter drizzled from the left wing in a strong start for Amsterdam. Lehman needed buckets, and they went to a reliable source, Mihailo Vasque who went down low like a low blow. Kovacevic knew Lehman wouldn't roll over, and he went for the fatality like in Mortal Kombat as Amsterdam skipped ahead. Alexander Ratkov kept fighting, and Lehman seemed to have more lives than Tom Cruise in the edge of tomorrow. But Amsterdam held on to reach their first Masters final since 2018. Kovacevic gets the bragging rights against his old mates. Now we are forgetting everything what happened before. We are getting our heads focused on the upcoming game against Novi Sad. It's going to be a rough game. Team Amsterdam is a team in transition, with the retirement of great Jesper Jobsay opening up a roster spot. The Dutch Masters decided to look abroad and quickly secured the services of outgoing Lehman star Maxim Kovacevic. This year uh, we started with uh, Maxim Kovacevic from uh, Lehman. He came to join forces with our team. Obviously Lehman is already at the top and we're aiming for it, so I think he, he likes to take the challenge with us and, and we do as well with him. 
It was not easy to accept the role, you know, uh, especially after the games, uh, you played good, after the tournaments you played good, but I uh, have a full understanding for the team Liman, uh, or in a conversation we realized it would be best for me to find some other team where I can show up because I think in uh, that one year I showed myself, uh, gained some experience because I had never played before, so it was a uh, good background for, for searching a new team, you know. I think we wanted to make make a next step, and and, and, and with with losing Short and Jasper, uh, we were looking for something. And uh, of course, we wanted to stay in the top eight, so we needed something special, I think. And then uh, we got in contact with Maxime, and uh, I thought it was a a win-win situation. Kovacevic had long been impressed by the always competitive team Amsterdam, who had earned the respect of every team on the tour, without being able to conclude on the last day. I always saw Team Amsterdam as a really professional team. Every single tournament, they were so close, but at the same time so far away from the winning or to, to make some important achievement, you know. I approached them, uh, everybody were really excited from Team Amsterdam, from coaches, from players, uh, had a good, really good feedback uh, from the beginning. The sharpshooters already making a difference on and off the court bringing important intangibles to the table in what has been a perfect marriage so far. For me personally, uh, I think one of my biggest things I have to learn is that I have to calm down during the game and well, he's been helping me a lot with that. Well, he brings a lot, I think, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. I think he's already bringing us to, to a next level, especially on the ball screens and like reading the game. And he was playing for the best team of the last couple of seasons. I feel uh, support from everybody and I came here to bring some experience from Lehman as well. Uh, I think I can give them some fighting mode, like some fighting experience and experience from the court. Definitely, you know, the small details can lead us to the, to the better achievement. In the decider between the sixth and seventh seeds, Novi Sad wanted the last laugh on critics who had written them off, while Amsterdam, talent and pro, without star DeMail Vanderhorst, were looking for their first ever Masters title. Red hot, Maxim Kovacevic flexed on them early to prove Amsterdam were the real deal. But Tomas Ivosev, aka Frankenstein, made the paint his restricted area, and he provided the O for Novi Sad. The big fella was even hitting on one leg. He had it going as the Serb skipped away. But Kovacevic has been on a mission for his new team and was hotter than Doha at noon to level things up. It became a mano a mano battle while Dushan Bullet, aka Mr. Bulletproof, came out of his shell. But Kovacevic, he kept answering like, hey Google, before Bullet made a late run as another Doha final went down to the last play. Quite fittingly, Kovacevic drained the biggest shot of his career with the Tiso buzzer beater to finish with a game high 13 points, giving Amsterdam their first ever Masters crown. How many times do you have to see this man do this before you just wrap him up? You cannot give him a glimmer of hope or he is gonna bury you. After carrying his team day one and leading all scores in the tourney with 35 big ones, Amsterdam's Arvin Slachter was named MVP. It's hard to describe in words. Working hard for it. It's an amazing, amazing feeling to get it. All right, I know. Here's what y'all been waiting for. Get your popcorn ready. Time for the top five plays of the Doha Masters. At number five, Marcel Essenwune giving refunds like customer service. Leave a review, please. Fourth on the list, he's played in all 10 editions of the World Tour, and you definitely don't want to play horse with this dude. Adin Kavgic with the circus shot of the tournament. In at number three, Chico Lynette turned Doha into downtown Manila with this Tiso buzzer beat. At number two, Strahinia Stoich has got the step and a brand new poster for his IG account.
Coming in at number one, dreams do come true. Maxim Kovacevic wins the title in a fairy tale 3x3 ending. Swish. He's right on time, yet again, wearing a different jersey, still playing hero. This time it's with Amster. Damn. In these uncertain times, we don't know when the next Masters will be, but 3x3 will be back very soon with the race to the Tokyo Olympics starting in Austria and in Hungary in May and June for the two Olympic qualifying tournaments. Stay ready, stay safe, and remember, you can always follow us, hashtag 3x3WT on FIBA 3x3 social media channels. That's on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. I'll let y'all next time. Until then, peace.